Hey guys, I finally got my phone mount hooked up the way I wanted. I'm getting ready to go to an antique store. I might go to two, I don't know. I'm honestly not that uh, hopeful because I'm looking specifically for some like older taxidermy and I don't know. Just when it comes to like oddity stuff, it seems like that's not really the vibe in Wisconsin. A lot of it is your grandma's old salt and pepper shakers, you know? But we'll have to see. It's been a little while since I made a video. I don't know. It's just like. I don't really know what to talk about all the time. <laughs> well, I guess you probably could see that now. Like, all I do as a human being is work and watch true crime and court cases play out. So, that's fun. So, lately, I've been watching Life After Lockup. And, um... Love is Blind. And the previous seasons of Love is Blind are, have been pretty good, but this one is, like, it's messy. So, I don't know. Let me know if you've been watching it. Life After Lockup is always a mess, and it's probably my favorite trashy reality TV since, like, the Bad Girls Club went out of style, like, ten years ago. I'm old. But, yeah. I didn't do my eyebrows or anything today. I'm kind of trying to rush around because my husband has some stuff that he wants to do later and I also need to clean up dog crap in my backyard, you know, all that interesting stuff, so. Part of the reason I'm going to the antique store is to get some stuff, hopefully for the expo. It just depends on, like, if I find things that are any good. Like I said, like, it's very hit or miss. Um, I found, like, some decent taxidermy before, but not typically. I'm almost there. Almost to the antique store. I'm wondering how busy it's going to be. Another thing I want to do here is kind of scope out like available booths because I am thinking after the expo that I might try to get a booth at an antique mall. I don't know if this is going to be the one, but I like that this one is right off the highway so that like anybody driving through they can stop and have their eyes on it because some of the other ones around here are kind of off the beaten path so to speak so yeah this one is the rustic dairyland antique mall and i've actually I haven't been here in a while like i said before i used to go out a lot more and check out stuff like this but ever since the pandemic i'm like a hermit so yeah, this whole YouTube thing is kind of making me get out of my comfort zone a little bit. So yeah, let's go inside. Hello.
little hesitant to talk about this because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. So, uh, basically, oh, cool, there's a detour. That's, that's fun. Um, basically, I want to lose some weight. So, when I was younger, I was like, super skinny and then every single child that I had it seemed like I put on 10 or 15 pounds each time I was pregnant and then it just never really went away now I don't mind being like a little heavier it doesn't like really bother me that much like on a physical level or actually, I mean, emotional level. It doesn't really bother me on an emotional level. On a physical level, though, like, my ability, like, my flexibility and, like, just, like, how far I can walk without, like, being sore and stuff like that has definitely been affected. So I just want to get, like, in better shape, I guess. And I've been going to the gym consistently for over a year and uh, within the past couple months I stopped going as consistently and I don't even remember it's always like something like I'll get sick and then I'll stop and then because I'm out of my routine of me going like every let's say Monday Wednesday Friday then I don't, it's hard for me to get back into it. But I finally, like, went back a couple days ago, and I went again yesterday, and so I'm trying to do that. But I don't know, I figured maybe just talking about it is another way to stay accountable. Um, weight loss isn't necessarily the goal. Again, it's, like, just getting in better shape so that I can do the things that I want to do and hopefully live a long and healthy life. So there's that. So maybe I'll just start doing some gym vlogs. I don't know. I don't even know. I'm like struggling hardcore with uh, imposter syndrome. So not just like, not just with YouTube, like, I don't know. To me, the YouTube is like, I can do it when I have time to do it, and when I don't have time to do it, I don't, because, I mean, right now, it's, it's just, it's just for funsies, you know? But, when it comes to my shop, I'm kind of struggling a little bit, because in the past couple of years, the oddities realm has just gotten a lot more saturated. There's a lot more people trying to, you know, do what people in the community have been doing. And so there's more small businesses and there's also been a lot of like drama. Like a lot of people doing illegal things and then getting caught and then it's like I don't want to be associated with with that side of things, you know? I don't think anybody does. Like it's kind of like, "Ooh, keep that over there. Uh, I'm very familiar with my local laws and try to be like on the up and up with things because the last thing you want to do is be doing things that are illegal and put your whole business and personal life in jeopardy over something as small as like selling animal remains that are not legal because that's a real thing. Like for instance in Wisconsin, you can't buy or sell bear parts, like any part of the bear. Um, I actually had, a couple years ago, somebody that liked my work, and they wanted to donate me a bear skull. And I was like, well, I'm not buying it. I'm not going to sell it. So I contacted my DNR, and they were like, yeah, that's fine. Like, as long as you don't buy it or sell it if it's a gift, that's fine. So, I did get a bear skull and I'm allowed to have it because the DNR said I could. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you have to just be kind of 
aware of that sort of thing. And some people just, they don't care. Or they just are ignorant to it, but you can't, there's not really space to be ignorant to it, especially when you're selling to other people, because then you're putting them at risk as well. So that's my little, my little rant. I don't, it's not really a rant. I'm just babbling, honestly. But yeah. But I guess, like, why I'm feeling like some imposter syndrome, it's like, I'm supposed to be going to this expo next, is it next month? No, it's April. Yeah, so in May, May 27th, there's an expo, and I've never done an expo before, um, I've always just sold on Etsy, and I wanted to do expos, but it was like, I was a full-time college student, and then I was pregnant, and then COVID, and so I just, like, never did it. So now I'm doing one, and it's a pretty big one, so I'm kind of nervous. I don't know, like, I don't even know, like, how much stuff to bring. Like, I don't want to, like, underprice things, but I also don't want to, like, overprice things, because when I go there, I notice, like, a lot of people... Like, they raise their prices, because, I mean, you have to cover booth, booth costs, you have to cover, like, all the costs that you put into it, and let me tell you, like, that's been a whole other thing, like, I'm investing all this money in, like, tables and stuff like that, and I'm just, like, I, I, I'm only, right now, I only have one planned, I just have the one, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what I want to do. It's not only just that, though, it's... I've been getting, like, a couple, like, negative reviews saying, like, you know, that my mystery boxes are cost too much or whatever, and I just don't feel like people understand, like, the business side of things. Like, in order for me to get items, like, I have to spend money as well, and I'm support supporting other small businesses while I do that. And then I have to take my time to pack each order and ship each order and all the supplies for shipping and I don't know, like every time I get like a negative review, it just, it, it makes me feel terrible for like a couple days. And every time it happens, I'm just like, should I just quit? Like what's, what's the point? Like I feel like when I first started, people were, it was different. And I mean, I know the economy is bad right now, and so any, like, little bit of money that people spend, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm not getting as many sales as I once did. I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I should just go back to being a collector. Because I put a lot of money every month into my shop. And at some point, I'm like... When do you know that it's time to, like, not anymore? And just do it, like, like how it started. It started as just a hobby, you know? It didn't start as a business. It wasn't, it wasn't ever supposed to be a business. And now it is. I don't know. Random thoughts. Random thoughts. I'm not saying that I'm, like, shutting down my shop right now. But it's something that I've been thinking about. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what the future holds. Right now, the... Everything's just been kind of on a downward trend, you know? I'm home. I figured I'd take advantage of this beautiful late afternoon light just to close out the video. And um, also, I realized like after the fact that I didn't even like tell you guys, but I didn't end up getting anything at the antique store. 
it was kind of a bust. It was not really like the stuff that I enjoy collecting. And I mean, there's a market for everybody, but I just, I didn't see too much. And what I did see that I was interested in, it was just too expensive. So, meh. But, uh, yeah. So, thanks for watching. I'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.